on from over 400 data centers uh, to over 1,100 in a 10-year period, where in the private sector we've seen a move towards consolidation. So it's greener in terms of making sure that we're leveraging these assets more effectively and also provides better customer service. Those are the other benefits. The example I used around cash for clunkers where we had challenges around the system not being able to uh, stay online because demand was so high versus a private sector company that leveraged a cloud solution that kept up with demand without any failure. Uh, <laughs> We don't want to keep our head in the clouds. A pun is the worst form of humor. <laughs> but Mr. McClure. Yes, I think uh, that's absolutely right what Vivek was saying. I think uh, we've got to be careful with numbers on averages being thrown around. Uh, I think the examples that we've documented in the federal government, if you, if you read the report Vivek was talking about in terms of the dozens of examples of cloud computing, if it's been used for improving software development uh, activities, it's in uh, is one range of cost. If we're actually saving storage cost because it's more efficient in a cloud environment, is another type of savings. If we've actually saved uh, uh, software development money by taking a common tool that's that's plug and play into an environment. So I think the cost savings will be, you know, dramatically different depending upon the type of application and type of cloud environment that we're putting these solutions in. But I would agree that uh, we shouldn't focus totally on cost, speed, agility, the ability to move quickly into the computing environments are significantly enhanced in these cloud environments and those are huge payoffs for service delivery to citizens. Ms. Filoni? I think we're NIST up. Uh, contributes to this is the uh, standardization or the recommendations of consistency in applying the guidelines and the standards across the agency so that the, these cost savings can be realized. Um, understanding our risk management framework, we've, the release we've just put out in 837 updates and uh, permits the leveraging of the certification and accreditation issues that we've mentioned. Uh, the, uh, the baseline controls that the VEX reference where you can actually continuously monitor whether uh, uh, security issues or uh, controls are actually deployed appropriately. So what where NIST contributes is this uh, capability of standards and guidelines to provide consistency so agencies can leverage each other's capabilities more effectively and make, make the cost savings real. Will, will the gentleman yield? Yes. Uh, uh, talked about, about the fitness of some future vendor. In other words, if you assume that, that each agency, unless they consent otherwise, doesn't have sharing between agencies and so on, how would you envision that as a, if you can't get what you want, would this be a, a step? Sure, and, and that's actually exactly um, what we're engaged in. One of the things we've done is we've looked at this problem around uh, expenditures in information technology and approximately $20 billion annually is spent on infrastructure. So if you take the entire $80 billion, break it down to just infrastructure spend on servers, routers, switches, um, networks. Air conditioning, backup generators, exactly. UPSs. And so the first step we're taking um, is to make sure that one, across the entire federal government, that we've got detailed plans as far as data center consolidation is concerned. So that's an effort that's actually underway and uh, part of the 2012 budgeting process, what agencies have to do is make sure they come in to that budget process to say, look, what is your plan? What is your strategy? For example, Department of Homeland Security has committed to move from approximately 24 data centers down to two. Uh, GSA has over eight data centers. And I could cite department by department. The and they're supposed to be the example of best of, right? Well, I mean, and that's, but the, and look, we didn't get here overnight. This is a multi-decade problem. So over the last 50 years, that's how the government has been growing. And um, in my testimony, I talked about how companies like IBM um, have consolidated, whereas the government continues to grow. And well, let me, ask a, let me ask a question as to that. If that's the case, we here uh, probably are the most parochial group you're going to find. We get reelected based on whether or not people believe we care about them. So it's not uncommon that we would want a data center in our district, particularly if it created good paying jobs. 
I want two. (laughs) (laughs) I would second that for the chairman. Uh, So, now, it happens that Brooklyn may not always be the best place. And I know that the electric cost in San Diego, they're not the lowest. So, what are you, cumulatively or individually, doing to create if you will, that best of location, best of price, cost for some of these data systems, and what are you doing to ensure that GSA actually goes to g- zero, hold me, hear me off for a second, zero data centers, because there's no reason for you to have a unique data center that is only GSA. You can have a unique room in a larger data center that five other agencies each have a room in, but what would be the cost effectiveness of having your own eight at your own sites, by the way, you probably would pick sites based on the congressmen who have the most influence on you, and I'm, and I'm perhaps one of them. Uh, well, Homeland Security might look to Mr. King and, and, and so on over there. What are we doing to ensure that these sightings are both as consolidated as possible and as efficient as possible? And, and that's and, and at least interfered by people like us as possible. Well, one, we look forward to working with the Congress as we take on this really, really <laughs> difficult problem. I think you're getting those two data centers. <laughs> because you've got, you know, 1,100. And what was really interesting is when we went back and looked at the data, some agencies couldn't produce that data right away in terms of where's your data center, how many servers do you have, uh, what is your rack utilization. And what we're finding, unfortunately, is that in some agencies, server utilization is actually at 7%. And when you think about cloud computing, that's where you've got a lot of wasted capacity. Because what ends up happening is everybody engineers their solution for what they expect the peak to be. Uh, therefore, they overbuild, and it ends up costing a fortune to maintain those systems. So, by this December... You mean like the stories where we've seen where servers are actually retired, never having been powered up, but they right. were bought. Right, and, and that's the type of waste we're taking head on. And that's why, by this December, agencies across the federal government have been directed by OMB to come up with roadmaps and plans and how they're going to consolidate. And part of what we want to make sure is that we're responsible in the consolidation because what you don't want to do is consolidate to one place where now everybody knows if you go after that one place, you're going to be able to bring down all of federal IT. So we've got to figure out how do we in this environment where we've got over 1,100, and that number may go up, by the way, because the final plans aren't due till this December. Uh, how do we make sure that there's enough geodiversity to ensure security, but at the same time that it's not so crazy that you've got data centers popping up every year all over the country? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right. Thank you very much. Let me thank all the witnesses for your testimony. I mean, you've been very-